Whether on TV or online, this is iPower One. Go to TuneIn.com, keyword iPower One FM. Listen online or download the app for free via Android and listen 24-7. The Hard Planet Media Studios in New York. This is iPower 2, hot off the wire. Targeting the Upper West Side, among his victims, a child and an 81 year old woman. News 4's Erica Byfield talked to the victims as police continue to hunt for the man who's doing this. Erica, what are these women telling you? Well, Stacy, at this hour, they're telling me they are desperate for police to make an arrest. They say that they keep reliving that experience in their minds when that man approached them. Here he is. This is the guy right here that police are looking for. Take a good look. Today, detectives walked all around the Upper West Side posting these flyers. I got my pocketbook like this, and he came out and grabbed it and went. So fast, I couldn't, you know, I went after him. Carmen Green says her back still hurts from her run-in with this man. Police say he manhandled the 81-year-old Tuesday afternoon inside of this Upper West Side post office just off of Columbus Avenue and 68th Street. He tossed her to the ground, stole her purse and her sense of safety. I've been a little nervous, you know. The hell is this first time that happened to me? He did not go far before striking again, this time targeting a mom and her two young children inside this Chase Bank near Broadway and West 70th Street. Video shows him watching them. Just as the four-year-old took $300 out of the ATM, he lunged. He actually went after my daughter, and he didn't try to avoid it. I mean, he went for the easiest way possible to get the money, which happened to be grabbing her hand and ripping her glove off her hand. I mean, he the 37-year-old mom asked us not to identify her, clutching her infant. She called the ordeal unnerving. I can't imagine that anyone could need money so badly that they could hurt a four-year-old in the process. Yeah. It's the age and vulnerability of these victims that's upsetting so many. That's sad. I wish I had been around. For this man to do this, where are you in your life? How lost are you? Detectives believe the attacker is 5'4 to 5'6 and in his early 20s. Today they fanned out, posting his photo. The victims just want him in custody. It's really scary to think that I'm not even safe in my neighborhood at 2.30 in the afternoon inside a bank. That mom told us that her four-year-old is still struggling to make sense of all this. She says her little girl keeps asking her if that man is going to come back and take her other glove. She says she's doing her best to reassure her she's going to do everything in her power to keep that from happening. On the Upper West Side, Erica Byfield at News 4. And heartbreaking moments inside a New Jersey courtroom where a widow confronts the man who shot and killed her husband during a carjacking. The crime happened during the Christmas season four years ago. Brian Thompson was inside the courtroom during that sentencing, and he joins us now from Newark. Yeah, the guilty pleas came last years, but in reality, the tears have never stopped. Just minutes after Short Hills gunman Hanif Thompson entered the courtroom, widow Jamie Friedland struggled through her victim impact statement. I hope you get just as many flashbacks as I do. Have just as much fear as I have. Just as much uncertainty in your future as I do. Four years and a month ago, husband Dustin Friedland pistol whipped, shot point blank in the head while on his knees as four men carjacked their late model Range Rover in the Short Hills Mall after the couple celebrated their first anniversary, Jamie remembering that moment all too well. Left me screaming, all alone, in a parking structure, holding my husband, bloodied with the blood of all my hopes and dreams. Thompson's lawyer expressing his remorse, but as he left the courtroom facing 30 years without parole, looking away from the camera, I saw him mouth, I love you, to his family and back, averting any gaze at Dustin's and Jamie and her families. Next to be sentenced, just on carjacking, Kareep Ford, though Jamie cried uncontrollably on her mother's shoulder earlier, Ford was the only one to speak his remorse to her and his own family. To my family, for friends, I just want you all to know that I'm not the one who did this. 
Ford and Kevin Roberts, both getting 20 years after pleading guilty to carjacking. The getaway driver, Basim Henry, the only one who went to trial, got life. When Jamie Friedland addressed the court, she spoke just once, but to all four. I hope you think about the scene you left me with. The life you left me with. The agony you left me in. Tustin's father also addressed the court, and he said this is a case where there should have been the death penalty. Now, for these families, describing a world forever darkened, it is very hard to see how today's actions bring any closure whatsoever. Live in Newark, I'm Brian Thompson, News for New York. So here's what you know. The feds arrested today 10 men and one woman for being a part of this alleged ring. They tell us that they actually got their drugs in Brooklyn, repackaged them there and here on Staten Island before moving all of those drugs to stash houses. They kept their heads down as investigators led them away, all accused of being a part of a drug-dealing Albanian gang. The faces of eight of the 11 people charged today in a sweeping federal indictment that says that they pumped heroin and heroin-laced fentanyl into New York and New Jersey for years. The indictment even goes on to say that the gang recruited customers for their DTO, or drug trafficking organization, from among other places, a drug treatment facility. We've lost countless people and residents um, because of uh, the struggle with opioids. Jacqueline Phyllis spends her days on Staten Island as the head of the YMCA of Greater New York, Staten Island Counseling Center. Her office treats at least 300 drug addicts per month. She called this news of the arrest a step in the right direction. It definitely helps to combat the problem, um, but it definitely is only one piece of the continuum. We found the home, the alleged ringleader, Metincosis, empty, his house a few hundred feet away from a school. The indictment alleges that the gang members knew how strong their drugs were and weren't surprised when one of their members overdosed from heroin that was provided. Phyllis says that her fight continues. What gives her hope is messages like this from children of addicts. They made all of these. She's now wondering how many lives these accused gang members ruined. Definitely possible that, that somebody has lost their life because of it. And if somebody didn't die, their life is definitely in shambles as a result of it. So the feds are telling us that this investigation is still active. They will not say if they plan to make any more arrests. Live on Staten Island, Erica Byfield, News 4, New York. They get to see something they've never seen before. Broadway came to PS72 in Throg's Neck today. I'm excited. Students got to see a production of the Broadway play, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, as part of the 10-week-long Inside Broadway tour. Cast members say it's a unique experience. See something different and not just, you know, see something on a screen. And it, it's really real and live and we're present and they're as much a part of the show as we are. The actors performed for a packed auditorium. With the students bursting out in laughter and cheers. Some of the actors recalling their own memories with school theater. Completely changed my life and from, I will never forget sitting in the theater, watching The Prince and the woman playing Cinderella and thinking, this is what I want to do. And the fact that we could do that to kids today all over the city is such an amazing feeling. Now this is just the first of dozens of plays put on by Inside Broadway, many of them taking place here in our borough. So what keeps the actors going for so many weeks? The kids, of course. We see their faces as soon as we come out, you know. It's great. I love it. And this is the first encounter with theater for many of the students. Actors saying they hope it's as valuable for the students as it is for them. And being live with them, we breathe the same air, and that energy is so uh, intoxicating. In Throg's Neck, Christine Russo, News 12, The Bronx. Report showing widespread problems with the service, and even worse, that many of the complaints are not even looked into at all. The audit examined more than 21,000 rider complaints made about the service in 2016, finding that almost half remained unresolved. Some of these were as serious as drivers going 80 miles per hour in a 40 zone, threatening riders, and not properly securing wheelchairs and vehicles. Accessor Ride is operated by the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, but the MTA contracts with outside vendors to provide transit. The audit found that complaints from riders to the MTA were passed along to the contracted companies and were often never investigated further. City Comptroller Scott Stringer initiated the audit and said he was astonished by the results. Even people who don't use the service told us that they're shocked about the findings. It makes me scared. 
That's the main thing is, you know, you got to be careful. I would be really upset. The comptroller gave the MTA a list of recommendations on how to fix the complaint system and even suggested that a position be created within the agency to defend the public's interest. In Parkchester, Justine Miller, News 12. I'm Jill Wagner here are some top stories from Cheddar on News 12. Netflix says it added 8.3 million subscribers from October through December, including 1.25 million in the United States, despite raising prices by about a dollar a month for standard subscriptions. Netflix credits the growth to original content like Will Smith's Bright, which was panned by critics but reportedly was highly streamed. Facebook's making another push into sports streaming. The social media site hired former Eurosport CEO Peter Hutton to negotiate rights deals going forward. Hutton joins Facebook less than a month before bids are due for digital rights to Premier League matches in 2019. And Amazon's new cashier-less store, Amazon Go, has been open in Seattle for about 24 hours, and so far the reviews are pretty good. Reporters tried to see if the cameras and computers would accurately calculate their bill. In most cases, they did, although some reporters made it out of the store with small items that the cameras missed. And that is your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Jill Wagner from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. With this wet weather, Katie, how's it looking? Well, the weather's been kind of weird all morning long. It's been on and off rain and then as of right now, no rain whatsoever. So it's kind of been a mix up all throughout the morning. We saw fog earlier and that was really what was rough for commuters earlier this morning. That heavy fog, especially if people were traveling along the Bell Parkway. But out here in Bay Ridge, people are making do just as they can. You can see lots of people carrying umbrellas just to be safe. Not too many people needing to actually use those umbrellas. Some people having them up for the drizzle that was coming down at different points throughout the morning. But really, it hasn't been too bad out here. It's just been a little confusing for people. So definitely the day to bring the rain gear, but hope for the best that you don't have to use it. We spoke to one little guy who talked a little bit about his thoughts on this weather today. So it's kind of rainy, but I didn't really know because it's kind of a mismatch this whole month. Like it, it was dry, then it starts snowing, then it started raining, so. And now you don't even have a jacket on. No. Crazy, right? Yeah. Well, it's time for a look at the overnight forecast for the five borough regions of New York City. I'm Daryl Green, and here is what you'll need to know. Partially clearing skies are in our forecast, so if you're going to be out and about tonight, anywhere from the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, Staten Island, Long Island, even parts of New Jersey and Manhattan, we're going to see relatively fair skies, but the temperatures will continue to plummet into the middle 30s. Now, the problem is going to be the winds that will begin to pick up and become pretty active as we go through the overnight 10 to 20 miles per hour making the wind chills feel like it's eventually in the 20s as we get out there for the early morning wake up on Wednesday so check the wind chills before heading out a cold start is in store for us for Wednesday radars all quiet no rain in the forecast until we get well into the upcoming weekend if you're gonna be out and about over the next 12 hours take a look here we're gonna continue to see those temperatures peeling back Remember, we had daytime highs at Central Park LaGuardia of 60 degrees, a big drop in the temperatures for the overnight. Mostly clear, breezy, a cold overnight. Overnight low temperatures either side of 35 degrees. West winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Again, with the wind chills by the early morning commute, it's going to feel like it's in the middle 20s. Mostly sunny, a breezy day. Daytime highs in the upper 30s to the lower 40s on west to northwest winds from about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Looking across the northeast United States, we'll say goodbye to the uh, storm system that brought us roughly about a just under a quarter of an inch of rainfall, if you will. Uh, out towards Islip, Long Island, they had much higher amounts, um, better than three quarters of an inch. High pressure will be our dominant weather feature as we go through the overnight and actually for the next couple of days. We'll see those highs giving us a good bit of sunshine during the days, a mostly clear sky as we go through the overnights. Now temperatures, you'll see them dropping back into the 30s, but rebounding into the 50s for the weekend. No before you go.
Get connected on our social media at iPower One Nation. For radio and TV news and updates, stay connected with iPower One.